it was like you see it everywhere you'd walk into a bookstore and there'd be a, a whole table of the books just stacked up and i'm just thinking no no sir no hello everyone welcome back to my channel today there are a lot of books missing from here because <laughs> we are going to be doing my book awards of the year 2020 is super exciting it's just around the corner uh, and i love new years as many of you know so what better way to finish off 2019 than to give out some awards some good some bad. Now, because I haven't been on here long, I've only been on BookTube for about three and a half months. If I'd been on here forever, I would have spent the whole of December doing like most disappointing, least favourite, most favourite, most surprising, all of those. But <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> I, it's my second day out here. <laughs> yeah. It's only my third day out here. I don't know. Instead, this is just one video, all of that collated. And essentially what you should know is that if I'm recommending you a book positively in this video, it is one of my favourites of the year. All of the positive categories are my favourite books of the year, which would have been in that video, and all of my least favourite books of the year are in the negative categories. I thought about doing nominations for this, but we would be here literally forever, because there are already 17 categories to talk about, so I'm going to try and go through this super fast. So essentially I think we should just get going, right? Let's get going. So, the first category... <laughs> I feel like we're gonna bang out potatoes, no problem. I mean, so we have time. Already did it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have time. We will be responsible for stock. Uh -huh. Is most underhyped. So this is the book or books <laughs> that I don't think get enough hype on booktube itself and for this I have decided to go with the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. I only have two books two and three with me here right now but for those of you who don't know this is a series about a girl called Vasya in Russia kind of old Russia and it's magical she has magical powers she has to save her town her world her city uh, I've done that in the wrong order but she has to save everyone essentially throughout this trilogy and it is incredible. I talk about it all the time and I don't think it gets enough hype. I really don't think it gets enough hype. I know some people talk about it and I know the last one was nominated for Goodreads Fantasy but like I don't care. I don't think that, I don't think, I don't think, um, there's books that get more hype on here than this. Than this. There are, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Underhyped means it's like under what it deserves. This still has some hype, but like really who talks about it? Not, not many people I watch talk about it. A few, a, a selective few, but really, oh my God, everyone should have read it by now. And the thing is, we're also caught up in reading our yearly, like the releases that come out that year. We're not getting to our backlist. And let me tell you, if this is sitting on your shelf and you haven't read it yet, please go read it. It's so magical. It's just so like wintry and just like, this is a perfect time of year to read it. So I think it should be one of the books you pick up in January or February. And that's it. I'm really trying to rush here because I don't want this to be like a 50 minute video, especially because I want to edit a 50 minute video. So most under hyped. Cool. Okay, so the next category is most overhyped. So a book I think was hyped up way too much and it didn't deserve it. And for this, I am going for Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. Now, I think this was one of the more, um, especially in the, in the weeks and months building up to its release, one of the more hyped YA fantasy books of this year so far. And <laughs> I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I've spoken about this, I think, in my first ever video, and essentially, a YA book about a girl who is a fox, a gumiho, and she has to feed off souls in order to live, so she kills evil men in order to survive, but it's also like a romance, and it's kind of written like a K-drama, I believe. Uh, I think that's what some people I watch have said. A few people like this. A few people who I, who I, whose opinion I hold in high regard liked it. I feel like it could have been like such a cool fantasy storyline but we got so caught up with the romance and I just didn't care. I didn't care about the romance. I I wasn't there for it. I wanted all the Gumiho mythology. They were the best parts. There were a few chapters I think where you just had a little bit of the mythology around the the fox and it was <coughs> top tier. It was it was really good. And then the romance just I just didn't care and I felt like at the same time 
so much happened that there there wasn't enough depth, but at the same time, nothing happened. Like, we were kind of just like, blip, 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 you know, like, uh, that's, how, uh, that's really weird. But <laughs> we were just, like, dipping our toes in lots of different plot points. And I just felt really underwhelmed by it. So I don't think it deserved all the hype it got earlier this year. That's just my opinion. That's my opinion. And your opinion doesn't count. So the next category I thought of was best character. And for this, I'm actually going with best characters. And I'm going with Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Yang. This is one of my favourite, favourite books of this year so far, as all of the positive ones are. Uh... <laughs> this has been spoken about quite a bit, but we follow Lei as she becomes a paper girl, who are basically girls who are forced to sleep with the king and be his, like, slaves in that in that way and it's kind of her story of finding love in such a difficult situation and her strength her personal strength it's just it's a really really great book and i cannot wait to read the sequel which is girls of storm and shadow don't they look so nice next to each other yes god okay um, yeah, super excited to pick this up, but we're talking about the first one right now. So I went for this for best characters because I felt like the collection of girls within uh, the group, they were really wonderfully varied. And I've said this a few times about how for me one of the best things about the book was how they each dealt with the trauma that they were going through, you know, some got really angry, some just really withdrew on in themselves and became so sad, some fell in love with their abuser. Um, and so I think it was done in a really realistic way and uh, sh the author managed to portray all these different reactions to trauma because it's not just one reaction to going through something as awful as this, there are many. And for me, that's why I felt like all the characters represented something and for me, uh, it was really a highlight of this book, all the different girls, and I really hope that in the rest of the series we get to spend some time with them. I don't know if we will because of how this one ended, but to me they were a real highlight of this book, having such unique um, cast of characters that she managed to show really human reactions in, even if we didn't spend a lot of time with the girls, and also just the whole cast of the other staff in the, in the, in the castle as well. All... <laughs> great characters so yeah definitely one of my favorite books of the year and if you haven't picked it up i think this is a really really great release to pick up and i hope the sequel is going to be good <laughs> next i am going with best villain i like that laugh <laughs> so for this i ha oh I'm teasing you. Uh, for this, I had to go with Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is essentially about villains. So for best villain, I couldn't go with anything but the book about villains. The great thing about Vicious is there are two characters, each with kind of like separate, uh, they're on separate sides, essentially. But you don't kind of know who the villain is. Are they both villains? Are neither of them villains? Is one of them a villain and the other one isn't? You don't really know what you're supposed to believe and I think it should really be up to interpretation. So in this we follow two boys who meet at school and believe that they can turn themselves into beings with kind of um, crazy super, what's the word, superhero powers, that's what I'm looking for, uh, by having a near-death experience and that's something they experiment with and then we see the fallout of them trying to experiment with that. One thing I'm going to say is, we'll come to this later, but this I think view this as a standalone you don't need to read the sequel. You don't. <laughs> I, in my head, I'm really trying hard to just view this as its own book. Because this was incredible. This was incredible. One of my favourite books of the year. But the sequel? <laughs> we, we don't talk about her. I really loved the approach of having kind of uh, really morally grey characters as really characters. If anyone has any good recs for morally grey characters, let me know down below because that's something that I really want to read more of in 2020. It's great. I love the characters. I love the whole cast of characters. They all bring something very unique and I love the approach of having a villain as the main character. I want it more. I need to read some like villain origin stories or something, don't I? If anyone has any recs for those as well. The next category is most likely to make a great film and for this I originally thought I'd go with like a fantasy, you know, a world that is so unique that it would make a great film but 
I decided to go with a thriller, and that is Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I don't have it with me, but, um, oh, oh, I just felt like when I read it in my head, I read like a film, and I really imagined it vividly, and I think with some of the twists and turns, you have a real uh, possibility for some great movie scenes. It's told through a series of letters of the narrator to a man that she hopes will help get her off of the murder she is accused of. She is accused of killing one of the babies she nannied in this house, this smart home. One of the children were killed and she is standing trial for murder. And she is saying, I did not kill that kid, sir. I didn't kill that kid. I didn't kill that kid. So do we believe her? There are so many reveals and I just feel like it would work really well in the film. It's set in Scotland, like dark, dreary. Oh, just thinking about it now. Yo. <laughs> The next category is most disappointing and I have two. The first is The Toll. I'm not going to spend too long on this. I have a whole vlog on my reading experience for this which I will link up above that side and very very disappointing but on the whole I mean I gave this three stars. I gave the first in the series three stars. I gave the middle one five stars. I think I gave this yeah this was like a 2.75 for me. So Really, I guess the middle in the series was just the odd one out, and then the rest of the series I thought was a three, so maybe this shouldn't be the most disappointing. So, but yeah, I this was a sad ending to the series, for which I had so much hope for. But I think for me, the really most disappointing is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. Oh, look at the nice hardback. Oh, and look. This was two stars for me and I can't even, it was just sh shocking. It was just bad. It was bad. I felt like this should just be a standalone and I've had rumours that there may be a third in this series and let me just tell you, no ma'am. No ma'am. Please, please just write some of your other brilliant books that I've heard so many wonderful things about. Don't carry this on because it doesn't need it. I just felt like it was pointless. Nothing really happened in this story that made me excited or really advanced the characters along or at least I didn't feel it. And the introduction of the other characters just wasn't needed. We should have just spent more time with the characters we actually cared about. I just didn't understand why this existed and it was so boring. I was just so bored. I made myself read this so quickly just to get through it because I don't DNF books and I was sure as hell ain't about to DNF a book I paid $26 for. No ma'am. I'm reading it. If I pay that money, I am reading it. So... Yeah, really, really big disappointment for me. <laughs> so the next couple of categories was most surprising or best twist was another one I thought about. And one book actually wins both of those, but for different reasons. And that is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Now for most surprising, it was most surprising because I didn't think I would like this as much. We follow Alex who goes to Yale and she has to work to kind of keep an eye on the secret societies. That are there. That's all I'm going to tell you. That's all you really need to know. And I had heard a lot of people whose opinions I trusted and whose opinions I usually have very similar opinions to. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. And so I was so nervous going into this. But let me tell you, I loved it. I have a reading vlog for this as well, so I won't spend too long on it. It's up there again. But I loved this book. For me, uh, I've spoken about this a few times. I love the books where I feel like I've earned the ending. I feel like I have earned the book. And some people find this confusing. I didn't. And for me, that was just why I was so surprising. I thought I was going to struggle. I thought I wasn't going to understand it. And I did. So that's why it was most surprising for me. And in terms of best twist, the ending. I don't even have to tell you. I don't even know how to tell you. I can't wait for the rest of this series because the ending left me scalped. I was... I was so shook. The ending had me. So I can't wait for the rest in this series. And if you haven't picked this up yet, don't be afraid because I liked it. There's nothing wrong with my views or beliefs because I have freedom of speech and everything I'm saying is true. So the next category I thought of was most poorly written. And for me, it had to be Girl Missing by Sophie McKenzie. I read this for my reading my favourite childhood books video. This was one of, probably my favourite book when I was a kid. And I, uh, sis, <laughs> it's so badly written. I'm not gonna spend long on it because no one cares, but it's terrible. 
it's terrible. It's some of the worst writing I've ever read. It was like a 10 year old wrote it. So for Mackenzie, if you're out there, I'm sorry gal. I'm sure some of your other books are great. And I loved this when I was a kid, so maybe it works for its target audience. But for me, looking back at it now, the writing, yo, the, uh, I'm not gonna get into it. I speak about it in that video, but the character, the lead character is one of the most annoying lead characters I have ever read. She is the most selfish lead character I've ever read. And no one, people call her out on it, but then I think you're supposed to believe that she's entitled to act the way she's acting. It makes me so angry just thinking about it. It makes me so angry anyway. That one I have no qualms in throwing because I bought it for one pound. So next I thought I would have a pair of categories. And the first one is what book would I recommend for beginners that I read all this year, what is the best book that I think a beginner who maybe you only read kind of five to ten books a year, what book would I choose for that to be one of yours and a book that you can read early in the year that will hopefully get you into reading more books and improving, not improving, but like increasing how many books a year you read, speeding up your reading. So for this I chose The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a bit battered. She's been through it. A lot of people have borrowed this from me. In this, we follow an old Hollywood starlet as she tells the story of her life. We follow the seven husbands that she had and we find out who her true love in her life was. So, oh, we kind of match, Evelyn. Yo, let's pose. I look like they have no bra on, yo. I thought about giving this to best character as well, but it was just pipped to the post. But Evelyn is an amazing character. Her life is so well formed we learn so much about her and it's a really really great character study i don't care as much for the monique storyline which is the journalist who is writing the story of her life monique has her own little storyline i don't care about that i know that comes to the end but like i didn't really need it but on the whole i think if you don't read a lot of books a year this is a super accessible read a lot of people read it so so fast you kind of fly through it because it's easily written i mean Yo, it's not sure, but I just think it's written in a way that encourages speed reading. Like, you just want to find out all the answers about her life. It's so engaging. So if you didn't read a lot of books this year, I would really, really recommend picking this up early in 2020 because I think it's the kind of book that would spur you on. So the next category then is what books I recommend to a veteran. You already read 200 books a year. Girl, you are flying through it. So what would I recommend to you? What would I recommend to you? I would recommend The Goldfinch by Tonna Tart. She's thick and she doesn't look thick, but let me tell you, she is 860 pages. So if you are someone who reads loads of books a year, you are already reading at a super fast pace, so the length shouldn't scare you off. And I think this is such an ambitious book. I think it's something we should all read. I gave it four stars. There are a few bits of it that are a little bit boring, like, you know. But um, on the whole, I think it's one of the best long-term looks at someone's life I've ever read. You follow our lead character, Theo, uh, from when his mum dies when he's age 13 up until, like, his early to mid-twenties. We follow him for a really long period and we essentially look at how each event in his life changes him and that's what I really want to say about the story but it's a really really great um you know you have all this time you have all this time to become attached to Theo and you really just feel for him and by the end of the story it just feels like such a you've climbed a mountain you've climbed a mountain so if you already read a ton of books, a ton of variety of books already, then I would look at challenging yourself with this because I think it is a challenge, but I think it's definitely worth it. And finally for our kind of general rounds, I thought we'd include saddest book. And this is for if you're looking to get your cry on in 2020, you want to get a bit of mosh. You thought, ah, I haven't, I haven't had enough of a reaction to books in 2019. I wanna get crying. An honorable mention actually, I forgot to say, goes to Love Aubrey. I also read this in my childhood books video. And if you're looking at reading a middle grade that you've never heard of before, but will make you, she will make you cry. She will make you cry. Let me, <laughs> yeah, an honorable mention goes to this, but the one I've actually chosen is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doer. This follows a young girl and a young boy from kind of the onset of World War II, I believe. Hang on, I read this right at the start of the year. Yeah, from the onset of World War II up until kind of the end as their stories eventually merged. And let me tell you, this book had me. I think for the last, 
I don't know, probably like 150 pages, your girl was crying non-stop. And it was like one in the morning and me and my boyfriend, we lived together, we should have gone to sleep. And I was like, <laughs> this book just takes you, it grabs, it grabs, it grabs like that. It grabs your heartstrings. It says, sis, I ain't letting go. I ain't letting go. It Oh. A majority of its chapters are kind of like two, three, four pages, super short. And so it lends itself to readability as well. I think it's helpful to recommend books at the end of the year that are helpful for people to read at the beginning of the year because we all want to get ahead on our Goodreads goal at the start of the year, don't we? I mean, I know we all do. So I think this really lends itself to that and to flying through it. So yeah, if you haven't picked this up yet, do it. So now we are getting into my best of a few different categories and how many categories have we got? Three. So I've thought of three other little characters, my best of, not my best book, but my other little, I want to shout them out. And then we've got my least favourite and my favourite book of the year. Are we ready? I think we're ready. First we are doing best non-fiction book I read this year. As you all know, I love non-fiction. I have gone with This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. So this is a story of a junior doctor here in the UK in the NHS. Uh, he's not a junior doctor anymore, but he was. And it's essentially his diary. So as you can see, let me, oh yeah. So there's diary entries on every page. <laughs> And he just, it just takes us through what he was experiencing at the time. And let me tell you, it is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking what our doctors were going through then, when the NHS had more funding than it does now. And it makes you think what they must be going through now. And I would recommend reading this even if you're outside of the UK, because it is relevant to all of us. And especially if you're in the UK, the NHS is really under threat at the moment, and it's something that we need to save. So... Yeah, I loved this. I read it in a day. It's a super, super fast read and it's funny. It's heartbreaking. It's just astounding. And it's so honest. One of the most honest nonfiction books I've ever read. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, pick it up. Please pick it up. Next is best audiobook. I read quite a few audiobooks in the year of 2019. It was the first time I'd ever really gotten into audiobooks and it's definitely helped me read the amount of books I've read. And I use Scribd. I don't use Audible. I use Scribd. If you're looking at trying out Scribd, you can get two months free with my link below. Open your purse. And I really love Scribd because you have an unlimited amount of books you can read, whereas with Audible and other subscription services, you can only get one credit. Uh, Scribd has, I think, if I'm honest, a smaller library than Audible, but the unlimited books really is what drew me to it and is what keeps me there because I can listen to as many books as I want and they have most every book I want. I say one in 15, they don't have the one I want, so it's fine. But for this, I have gone with Sadie by Courtney Summers. I loved this audiobook. It is incredible. I think if you're going to read this book, you have to re listen to the audiobook. The book is partly from our protagonist's uh, Sadie, her point of view as she searches for her, her sister's killer, but it's also told in podcast format of a guy looking for Sadie as Sadie is now missing. And so we meet her family through the podcast. And let me tell you, the podcast sections were my favourite sections of the audiobook because you could hear the clocks ticking in the houses and people walking around, shuffling around their rooms, and it really just made it feel so vivid to me. It was just incredible and the way the music and the oh it just sounded so much like a podcast. It was so 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 good. So I think everyone talks about this but it was definitely my best audiobook of the year and everyone needs to go listen to it. If you're gonna go and you think oh, I'm gonna go dabble in script let me go use Megan's link <laughs> then I think Sadie should be your first choice. I recommend it to everyone when they say Megan I need an audiobook recommendation I say here you go. Just go. Just go away. Next I thought I would mention best poetry collection and that would be She Must Be Mad by Charlie Cox. This is her first poetry collection. I also read her second one which is Validate Me but I prefer She Must Be Mad. I met Charlie Cox recently and I will link that video up above as well 
and she was just, it was just the best author interaction ever. She is the sweetest ever. But She Must Be Mad follows Charlie's journey from childhood to where she is now uh, on her mental health journey, her relationship with herself. It has four sections, which are She Must Be In Love, She Must Be Mad, She Must Be Fat, She Must Be An Adult. So those are the kind of, it gives you an idea of what the poems are about. I've come up really bugged up all of a sudden. <laughs> so relatable like I felt like I related to a lot of the poems in this um and you relate to different sections so like I didn't necessarily relate to a lot of the love sections because they were about uh how difficult it is being in these short-term relationships that a lot of young people are in at the moment and I ain't never been in that <laughs> I'm the guy who was my first kiss I've been with for three years so I couldn't really relate to that aspect but relationships with mental health relationships with her body were definitely things that I could relate with so I feel like if you are a young woman or a young person in today's society, there will be something in here. There will be a, a good number of poems which you can relate to because it just exposes how so many of us are feeling. So I've spoken about Charlie Cox so much. Again, I haven't, I've listened to them a little bit, but her poetry collections are on script and I want to reread them on there because she narrates them. And let me tell you, from going to her, from going to her poetry reading when I met her, she, uh, the poems take on a life of their own even more when she narrates them so I think listening to that on script and it's so short it's like two or three hours like hardly anything when it comes to an audiobook um it'll be a great way to start off your year and yeah just the way she reads them she's got the most amazing voice to read poems so I would really recommend checking those out on there next is least favorite book now I am currently reading a book that um could be my least favorite book of the year <laughs> but I haven't finished it yet so we can't award it that and to be honest this book the book I'm going to talk about annoyed me so much so much it should be most overhyped but I wanted to save talking about it till now okay it's normal people by Sally Rooney it's terrible <laughs> and the thing that makes it worse is I don't know how hyped it is outside of the UK but in the UK this was Waterstone's book of the year last year it was like you see it everywhere. You'd walk into a bookstore and there'd be a, a whole table of the books just stacked up and I'm just thinking, no, no sir, no. It, it, it... <laughs> Lipstick in my Valentino white! So you basically follow a boy and a girl from when they're very young in Ireland to when they, I think over a period of maybe five or six years and they sleep together, they have that kind of relationship, they are kind of kind of boyfriend and girlfriend, then they're not kind of boyfriend and girlfriend, they don't see each other for a year, then they run back into each other, and you just follow their relationship. And I just felt <laughs> we went nowhere. <laughs> I felt like the relationships didn't change, they just carried on treating each other the way they always had, and I hated the way they treated each other. And here's the thing, I don't think I was supposed to. I don't have an issue in books when characters treat each other badly, as long as we know and everyone accepts and you're supposed to believe that they are treating each other badly. I don't think I was supposed to believe they were treating each other badly. I think it was supposed to be normal. It stresses me out, it stresses me out. I don't think, I don't know, someone tell me if I'm wrong. Am I supposed to think they are just like, they haven't learned from all their mistakes the whole book? I feel like we just, all these mistakes are made. I'm knocking things off in my aggression. <laughs> I feel like all these mistakes are made and they treat each other so poorly for nothing. No one learns, no one changes, and it's just, it was bad. I don't understand why so many people love this book. I think it is the most basic as storyline ever, ever. But anyway, let's talk about fun things because that is why we are here. Let's get rid of the negativity. <laughs> Go away, go away. We do not have that in this house. We are gonna be positive. And the thing is, we are so positive in this house, I struggled to pick my favorite book of the year so bad. And even now, I ain't sure. But I I cut it down to two. Two girls stand before me. <laughs> I only have one card in my hand. <laughs> so the runner up, second place for my best book of the year. Is the Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This could still be my favourite book of the year. It was incredible. I read this in the same vlog that I read The Toll, so I'll have already have linked that. But if you want to check that out and check out my reaction to this, it was 
one of the most magical stories I've ever read. One of the most special stories I've ever read. And it's incredible. There is not really a way to describe this other than our key protagonist, Zachary, finds a book in which part of his life is told and he doesn't understand how anyone could know that about him. And it sends him on a winding story of meeting strange untrustworthy people and being in underground libraries and having stories that turn out to be true but are still stories and I it's it's so good it's so good it's just incredible and I've spoken about this so many times I still don't have the words but it's just amazing so this was very almost, almost my favourite book of the year. But it was pipped to the post by one. And that is... Are we ready? I'm not. The Secret History by Donna Tartt is my favourite book of the year. Now let me explain. This is the first book I read this year. I picked it up on the 1st of January and I read it. <laughs> Everyone knows what Secret History is about. It's a group, group of friends. One of them is killed at the beginning and we kind of follow them through this weird ass story of them being weird people and that's all there is. <laughs> I love the characters in this, even the ones who are bad people, I love them, I love them and I thought the character study in this is so interesting and the way it is set out with us kind of going back in time and then catching up with them, so good. <laughs> Yo, I don't even have the words. It is just a great, great book. And for me, I think the reason it has to be my favourite book of the year is because it's the reason I'm here. It's the reason I'm here making this video. This is the book that spurred on me reading 80 books this year. It is the book that made me want to read more. It is the book that made me fall back in love with reading completely. And so... Without this book, I wouldn't have this channel. I wouldn't have met all of you guys. I wouldn't be here having such a great time. And I think for that reason alone, it just pips the star of the sea off. In enjoyment factors alone, they are they are drawed. Drawed? Drew? They, they drew? They drew? <laughs> but I think because of the effect of this one on my life, it has to be number one. So I'll be surprised, quite honestly. I mean, not really. <laughs> But The Secret History is my favourite book of the year. So there we have it. This video is probably long enough already. But they are all of my favourite and least favourite and all the different categories books of the year. That's it. That's it. That's my reading year summed up. I cannot wait for 2020. I'll be coming to you with my reading goals for 2020 in my next video. And let me tell you, I am scared. I'm being a little bit, 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 I'm being a little bit ambitious. <laughs> I'm being a bit ambitious. So we shall see how it goes. And I'll be here to chat to you about all my plans for how I'm gonna track my reading in 2020 as well. I'm very excited to chat to you all about that. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know down below what your answers for some of these categories are. Any of them, I'll put a list of all the different categories in the description so you can have a look and tell me, Megan, I think this would make a better film than 10 the key or whatever, whatever you wanna tell me. Um, I would love to hear what some of your favorite and least favorite books of the year have been. So thank you as always for watching until the end. I cannot thank you for all the love and support I've had in 2019 in such a short space of time. And let me tell you, we are going to have so much fun in 2020. It's going to be a really, really great time. So I will see you. Oh my God. Next time I'll see you for the new year. That's so much fun. I'll see you in 2020. And thank you all so, so much. Bye.